With that, we we'll move on to Dr. Dipanshu Agarwal, sir, and he will be speaking on medico medical legal survey by UOC. Uh, very good morning to one and all. So this was another survey which we did in UOC, and I would like to present the uh, results of it. But before, like, going on to the topic, uh, I would like to ask, like, how many of us attending this uh, session do have awareness about indemnity insurance? And how many of us actually have it? Yes, <laughs> Puneet sir does not I have it. I don't know the nitty gritties <laughs> of it, but I, I still took it. John, do you have uh, indemnity insurance? Yeah, 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 yeah. Only, I think one of our primes. Only Puneet sir. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, I'll be discussing the surveys, uh, survey results uh, which we had conducted uh, a few years back. So it was basically uh, developed using Google Forms and circulated to UOC members and other uh, non-UOC members as well. And it was available for a period of six weeks and we had evaluated the results. So the basic demographic was the mean age of the respondents was 38.4 years and um, slightly over 50% were male. Um, 75% of the respondents were UOC members and rest were non-UOC members. If you talk about the age groups, uh, more than 40, uh, it was 3 is to 1, uh, like UOC, uh, matching with the number of UOC respondents. Less than 40 years were almost 76%, 74% and more than 40 years were 26%. If we talk about practice setting, uh, uh, majority of the respondents were from south and central, like forming almost 56% of the respondents. And uh, if we talk about the uh, practice setting, uh, uh, majority of the respondents who uh, responded were from the solo private practice or group or uh, group private practice, uh, and including private institutes. Uh, if we talk about the designation at workplace, uh, almost 80% of them were junior consultant or senior cons consultant. Uh, if we talk about, uh, we also, uh, when we ask them about the awareness regarding the profession, uh, professional indemnity insurance, 82% of them were aware, but it was surprising to note that only 54% of them had professional indemnity insurance. Uh, when, when we compared this awareness versus uh, uh, awareness ratio versus actually having the indemnity insurance across different groups in, in 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 the age groups of different categories there was statistically significant difference between all the groups where there was awareness of it but only few of them had possessed it similar uh, difference was noted across male and female gender uh, like um, maximum, like most of the male respondents were aware of it, but only 65% of them had the indemnity insurance. And similarly, in females, the ratio was almost similar. If we talk about zone-wise distribution, again, this was a statistically significant figure across all the zones. And if we talk about design, when we uh, when we asked it, when we compared it between in, in amongst the different designation. Um, only uh, most of them uh, had aware were aware of it but uh, there was a very low uh, um, low possibility of having the insurance uh, in the younger generation since they are lesser aware about it and uh, similar uh, results were noted in the practice setting so uh, when we asked them that if have you out of the 109 respondents which we had in the survey uh, if you if they have faced lawsuit two percent which i feel is a significant number when we when it comes to lawsuit and uh, the, the they found that process of hiring and uh, the, the most challenging part was process of hiring lawyers and court works uh, was not very smooth and they had faced difficulties in that and uh, when we asked them about would you would they be interested if legal help is provided almost 94% respondents were 94% um, uh, respondents were uh, agreeing for that and also if they wanted uh, they would be interested in webinars and teaching uh, uh, courses if they are being conducted on medical legal aspects and if then we then the next important part is insurance companies and legal service providers so insurance company basically covers uh, the final compensation amount that has been filed against you uh, if the court has award uh, given a just uh, given 
notice to you to sir, give this much of uh, compensation that insurance company takes care of it. Then there is a se second separate segment that is legal service providers. They take care of uh, all the par parallel or para legal activities like arranging a lawyer, uh, doing the paperwork for you. All those activities are taken care by them. And you need not worry about the practice because if you have to go to the court every day for every small little work, that will hamper your practice and mental peace. So apart from insurance, there is another entity called legal service providers. So most of the insurance, like if we uh, only 59 respondents had uh, insurance cover and out of that, the companies which uh, they most of them opted were uh, ICICI, Lombard and United India Insurance. Then coming to the legal service providers, so they they charge a minimum fee like say three to four thousand per year, and then they take care of the rest of every uh, rest of the things that they they they'll get you that they'll do the paperwork for you, they'll arrange a good lawyer for you. If you are not satisfied, you can have the lawyer and they will pay the fees for that. So all those things you do not have like you will have to shell out very small amount, but th these comes in uh, very helpful. So uh, service providing agencies, there are many, there is when they, there is Medico, there is AMC, there is Apex con Consultant, there is IMA, there is Doc Shield, Medef, Maharashtra Ophthalmic Society also has it. But out, out of the res uh, 59 respondents who had insurance, only 30 had taken the, uh, the uh, these help of le these legal service providers. And out of that, AMC and IMA were the top most, op top, top preferred options. Then again, the... Uh, had uh, 75 lakhs or le lesser than that so our ideal thing uh, because there have been multiple lawsuits now being filed against indian doctors as well earlier it was famous in like it is pretty common in us but now in indian india also doctors are getting sued for this so uh, for us from our point of view if you have because the compensation amount especially in the retina segment and uh, rop you, uh, there have been a compensation for around almost 1.5 CR also in one of the case. So ideally recommended uh, amount from our side, from the survey what we analyzed is it should be 1 crore or more. The, you should always, it's, it's a good thing to have these service providing agencies as backup because they will save a lot of money and a lot, lot of energy of your and you can still continue working at your normal pace without taking uh, headache for all the uh, parallel activities and uh, you should understand the terms and conditions discuss with them uh, discuss with um, peers because uh, uh, anujit might be more knowledgeable about this and he can help you with this and again to save all of this good documentation is the key thank you uh, i would like to acknowledge yoc and yoc core legal team for this survey thank you uh, thank you so much sir so the last line good documentation i was in a session i think yesterday where they mentioned where the key takeaway was that in your prescription if required write less but write legibly because a doctor could not recognize his own prescription and what he had written in court and he was fined for that so that's one important takeaway that i had taken from that session yeah, that another I would thing like is speak share. if you, even if you have not said it you should have it on the paper exactly, that will exactly. Save you. that's one important yeah. thing so you've mentioned a lot of advantages and a lot of nitty gritties regarding the insurances to take so is are there any red flags to always ask these insurance companies before you choose them some things which you one, have seen one thing which i when i was opting for it claim and things yeah like that. claims uh, and another thing is there is something called civil civil case and criminal case right so there might be some criminal cases also being filed against doctor so few of the insurance uh, these companies take care of it and few of them do not right so exactly. it's better to have both on the panel because patient might file a criminal case also against you so that is one thing i, I realized and uh, would you recommend any other source any online source which would have more the league the league the legal aspect of it because there are a lot of webinars from doctors who are explaining this but Coming is there that, anything that in your so i have that not you come had? across any other what was the question so uh, is there any legal source that one can read about medical indemnity insurance because right now most people follow webinars and follow uh, seniors who tell them give them advice so there is uh, not any as of now there is not any official course but do you do have uh, PGDMLS, PGDMLS, yeah. um, PG right, Diploma right. in Medical Legal Services. I dis did this course during my residency. Okay. So that time I was actually uh, uh, got a uh, awareness that fine, this is very, very important. 
but uh, there are lot many short courses and there will be one course which will be coming up this year probably which will be on telemedicine and its medical legal aspects, aspects. so okay. these that those kind of courses will be very short but this pgml pgdmls course which i did was a two years course it was um, that i had to write an exam and all so there are lot hmm. many courses there is another course which is uh, by uh, which anand sir was suggesting us that it is mba which is related to medical legal services that is also a two years course and there is uh, there will be four semesters 50000 for each semester semester the fees is so it is something which is very uh, will be very recognized course so if somebody is interested we can definitely share the link if needed i just wanted to add one point we spoke about indemnity insurance so if in case you have your own hospital and you are working over there so you have to have indemnity insurance for yourself as and well your as, as well yes. as your hospital, hospital yeah forget about your staffs and all mm. so let's say patient can put the case on doctors you as well or as your the hospital. hospital yeah so now if in case you are employed in a hospital so it becomes hospital's responsibility to have right. insurance for you right so the doctor can't sue the doctor uh, the uh, patient can't sue the doctor over there even if the doctor is sued he, he can be uh, easily he can come out of that case because the patient has come to the hospital he doesn't know who will be the doctor he doesn't have choice of the doctor so his his direct contact is just with the hospital so it's kind of you know with whom you are taking the service the hospital the doctor is giving service to the hospital so there is connection between hospital and the doctor the patient and doctor can't be connected in this case right so i have one i have yeah. one question in that regard allowed enough you go there so uh, the thing is uh, that i when i was with my first uh, when i was in my first corporate job that was end of site uh, in 2018 and i had my own professional indemnity i did not have any cover from the organization i don't most few of them cover few of them do not now now in my current organization i uh, my policy was lapsing the one that i had which had been continuing since 2018 uh, i let it lapse because i got another uh, cover from my organization so i think it's the place of work in the indemnity that is important so now my policy is says that these so and so branches of shopsite i hospital are covered under this policy meaning that if i operate at this hospital then i am covered and if i don't then i am not covered so should we be having two policies you can you can no should you we can. be having two policies no you Just can have it from so if you are operating at different center obviously you will have to have that backup because th that won't the sharp side no. policy won't cover you so the the question i was arriving at was that now that i have an insurance uh, from my organization which clearly mentions that i don't operate anywhere else so uh, if a, if something happens then the it's going to be directly against me not against the hospital right no 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 huh, so that that's what i want to say that it depends on the patient uh -huh. whom he is putting allegations on if he is saying that dr purin jain i want to put allegations so so it's between you and the patient now it depends on the how what terms you have with your hospital in this case so if in case you say that this hospital has employed me you can be saved in the court though the patient has put the case on you okay the patient should be putting the case on the hospital and it's between you and the hospital how you deal now when it come to indemnity insurance i personally feel that you should have it for your own self you you the the premium are very very less nowadays like 2000 rupees mein you can get cover for 25 lakhs the minimum uh, amount which we'll suggest you should take is 1 cr now if in case i am traveling outside india for surgery so i should have indemnity insurance which is globally applicable so there are some companies from mauritius they give global in, uh, indemnity insurance as well so it is how you secure yourself no but then having two policies how does that so help you can have you can how have. does that help no because it will help you outside the shop site it, no it, that is not happening na so i am not if i am not operating outside shop site huh. and if i am operating within the uh, bowel then you don't have to take because you, you already your hospital has already yeah, taken so na there is no benefit of having an individual policy right no 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 When there won't be any benefit like if yeah right so the the ima has uh, sort of uh, not exactly an indemnity insurance they have some sort of legal support and all that and um, so if you have uh, the ima support as well as an indemnity insurance i think ima will take care of the legal challenges yeah, in thing. case you have to pay uh, you you lose and you have to pay then the other one kicks in am i insurance right insurance company pays for the compensation which you, which has been awarded to the patient and lawyer fee paperwork fee everything is taken care by these legal service providers so, so the other thing is that 
the insurance companies they also have their own lawyers nowadays so they don't want uh, somebody uh, other coming up and telling that we have lost the case and we have to pay this much of compensation but in that case you can always say that i want to have my own lawyer but these insurance companies nowadays most of them they have their own lawyers for these things so it is definitely good idea to have indemnity insurance uh, there is no doubt about it right 